Now, there's a new doco about to open about Elmo and the man responsible for him, Kevin Clash. Behind every great man is an even greater woman. <laughs> and behind everyone's favourite Elmo is this bloke, Kevin Clash. Upon joining Sesame Street in 1984, Kevin was assigned to Elmo, who was pretty rough to begin with. Rhyme for boys is noise! But who Kevin quickly developed into a symbol of love. Goodbye, hun. I've been in situations where a child could be just screaming, crying and upset and their, their parents are trying to console them and, and calm them down and and uh, I could put Elmo on and, and, uh, and go over and, and, and Elmo will say something to them and their whole attitude will change and a big smile comes over their face with the tears still running down. Uh, it's, it's amazing how they really how they really relate to this little little red monster. As a boy, Kevin began building his own puppets with a dream to one day work with Muppet creator Jim Henson and his team of puppeteers. I was around nine, ten years old. That's when I really thought, oh, you know, I'd love to learn how to build these puppets. So I was glued to the TV trying to figure out how to build them. Uh, my mom said, you better move back from that TV, you're going to go blind. Because uh, I was so intense in looking at how the, how the seams, you know, how you couldn't see the seams of the puppets and everything. So Your first puppet involved your father's coat, I believe. Oh yeah, um, I uh, I took I saw the lining of my father's trench coat, and I wanted to make a monkey, so I just took it, cut it up, made a monkey out of it, and realized what I had done afterwards. And I thought, oof, man, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Well, are you ready for a show? Performing his own characters as a teenager on local TV in the 1970s, he attracted the attention of Jim Henson, who made his boyhood wish a reality and hired him as a puppeteer. This is a flying cupcake! He was in charge of a few before Elmo, who gradually became the phenomenon he is now. I was getting a lot more scripts of this character and, and I was working, I was performing him a lot more. And then the next step, of course, is toys and then uh, <laughs> the Tickle Me Elmo craze oh. <laughs> Yes, we have that craze permanently in my household. <laughs> Not with me, with my four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and kids can be pretty honest. Do you find they're tough critics or are they pretty easy to please? You know, I've, over the years of, of performing this character, just doing one-on-one -on -one and, and meeting kids is the best thing in the world. They're, first of all, they're the funniest comedians in the world because they're so natural with it. <laughs> Um, plus, they're so honest. When I put Elmo on and I go and meet and greet children, they don't look at me because they don't see me <laughs> on the show. They don't see me. They don't see yeah. me every day. They see Elmo, and so that's that's their best friend. And so they want to have a conversation with Elmo. I always say that uh, I'm uh, someone who's carrying their friend around. I guess you really are the perfect example of dreaming something when you're younger and just working hard at it to make it happen. Yeah, I call it the Cinderella story. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's uh, it's been a big dream come true for me. Uh, to not only, you know, watch uh, Sesame Street and the Muppets growing up and wishing I could uh, be a part of it now at, uh, at 51, uh, still going strong. Just very, very happy and blessed of all of the years I've gotten to work with Jim Henson and, and all his wonderful performers. Now, before you go, is there any chance we're going to have a little uh, chat to your little red furry friend? Hello, Elmo. It's Carrie. How are you going? Hi, Miss Carrie. Are you looking forward to Christmas, Elmo? Yeah, Elmo always looking forward to Christmas. Elmo's making making presents right now because Elmo doesn't buy them. Oh. Elmo makes them. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and what are you hoping Santa will bring you? Oh, Elmo just wants everybody to have fun on Christmas. Elmo just wants to say hello to Santa. Oh, <laughs> you're going to have to stay up late and try and catch him. Yeah, and normally Elmo can't. Because Elmo always falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Can we get you to say a, a very Merry Christmas to everyone and all the kids in Australia? Oh, very Merry Christmas to all of Elmo's friends in Australia. Elmo loves you and Happy Holidays! <laughs> <laughs> He is cute. Elmo does talk about himself in the third person quite a lot, though. Yeah, so far, he's allowed to. <laughs> it's, is it weird, though, when he... I found that weird when he walked into the classroom yeah. with the kids to reveal no, the himself they with... don't see him at all. They That's don't the see view. him at all. That they means, just see Elmo. That means they've gone to a That's lot of trouble over the out. years of not yeah. showing him for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time. That's the cute bit, isn't it? The kids know he's there. Oh. But, but he's not there. They don't care. Well, I actually had uh, Ollie with me, my son, when I did the interview, and he watched me interview Kevin, and then he watched me interview Elmo, and it didn't seem to matter at all. Oh. And I actually, I just want to play this tiny little clip where I got Elmo to have a quick chat, uh, Ollie to have a quick chat to Elmo. <laughs> Merry Christmas! 
What do you want to ask Elmo? What do you want for Christmas? Well, I want everybody to be happy and healthy for Christmas. I want Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness and health. He wants no, Lego. So the, the great thing is, like Lego, a lot cheaper than world peace. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo, our puppeteer's journey opens at Acme on Tuesday the 27th of December and head to our website for all the details. You'll also find the extended version of my chat with Kevin and Elmo as well. Got to take a quick break, back in a tick. 